Welcome everyone. Um, I'll be discussing the visitor pattern and multiple dispatch today from the hands-on design patterns with C++ chapter 18. So what is the motivation behind uh, the visitor pattern? Uh, it is to break dependencies between hierarchies of objects and different operations that you want to perform on this hierarchy. Uh, it gives you the ability to effectively add new operations to existing hierarchies of objects uh, without ever needing to modify them. Uh, it's effectively like adding new virtual functions um, to an existing hierarchy of objects without having to modify the primary interface and then all the derived classes. Uh, this follows the open close principle, which states that software should be open to expansion or addition to it but closed to modification of the existing code. Uh, and finally, the visitor pattern is, is the way to perform double dispatch in C++, which is, I call it double dispatch because it's really just a special case of multiple dispatch. But I, I'll, I'll explain that toward the end of the presentation. So let's look at a hypothetical example here. On a, in the left, we have a hierarchy of shape uh, classes. So we have a circle and square, it inherits from some shape interface. On the right, we have a hierarchy of renderers. We have a renderer interface and then derived classes like OpenGL or Vulkan used to, to draw these circles or squares. And finally, on the bottom, we have a serializer interface and a hierarchy of, of classes that represent different serializers, one for serializing into JSON, and one for serializing into the XML. So now imagine that you would like to be able to both render and serialize the shapes that you have. So here's one way you could do it. And I'm sure you've all seen this approach before, where you have an iSerializable interface and iRenderable interface, and then the shape implements these interfaces, or in the case of C++ inherits from them. They they decorate the interface of the shape with uh, methods like serialize and render. And then each derived class of the shape, like circle and square, has to implement its own specific serialize and render uh, overload. Now, what's, what's bad about that is that you could argue that circle and square shouldn't really have to know anything about being rendered or being serialized, right? And circle, all it should really know about is what is my radius? The square should really all, only know about what is, what is my size, the size of, of my side. So with this approach, you see here, you're, you're injecting a lot of knowledge and implementation into classes that really shouldn't, shouldn't concern themselves with, with that. Visitor allows us to, to separate that. And the drawing here, you see, you know, got a little tight on the screen of the iPad I was drawing it. But what you see on the left, you, you still have your shape, circle and square uh, interface and, and classes. And you add only one method to the interface of shape, which is accept. And that accept takes as one parameter the instance of a visitor interface that you create. Um, and then each of the class in, in your shape hierarchy, like the circle and the square, implements just this one method and usually this one method accept is just a one-liner, as you will see uh, later in, in the next slide. Uh, and on the right, you implement um, different visitors. They, they implement this visitor interface, which again has only one method, um, visit, but one method per type of an object in the hierarchy on the left. So then serializing visitor has two methods called visit on a circle and visit on a square, and a rendering a visitor has the same, visit circle and visit square. And you do that because you, you're then able to contain the knowledge about how to serialize a circle only inside the serializing visitor, right? And how to render a circle, you contain this implementation only within the rendering visitor. As long as the circle and or square have public interface that allows you to query things like radius, position, and size, then the serializer and the renderer can both do their jobs. Uh, so here's how these interfaces can be implemented. And on the left, you will see the abstract shape 
interface uh, with three methods. Uh, the first two are size and area, then that uh, each, you know, each of the shape classes can implement. Circle or square, they both implement the size and area uh, differently. <clears throat> and there is the final method called accept, which just takes a pointer to, to an abstract interface called shape visitor. And again, both circle and, and square will implement this accept as a one-liner, as, as you will see in a second. Uh, and on the right, you have your abstract shape visitor interface uh, with just overloads of the visit method uh, per each type in the uh, in the shape hierarchy. <clears throat> so shape and its derived classes know only about the uh, shape visitor interface. And um, shape visitor and its children uh, know about every uh, every type in the shape hierarchy and how to operate on it. Now you'll here you'll see the concrete implementations of these these two different interfaces. So on the left you'll see a circle which implements shape and then implements the three methods: size, just returns the radius, area, pi r squared, uh, and accept takes uh, the instance the pointer to the shape visitor, and simply calls visit on it, passing itself to it. Uh, square does the same thing. Its size just returns the size, um, the size of the side, uh, area, you know, side times side, and again, accept method, just a one-liner, um, passes itself to, to the visit method of this shape visitor interface. And on the right, you'll see two different visitors. One is the serializing visitor, and the other one is the rendering visitor. Uh, each one implements the visit method for the specific type and does whatever it needs to do with the circles or the squares. Um, so you can clearly see here that nothing about serializing or rendering that's implemented on the right is ever present, visible, or clattering any of the classes on the left. And finally, the way, the way you use it is you create your circle and your square, um, then you create uh, whatever visitor you want. And on the circle, you can just call C, accept, serializing visitor, or square S, accept, uh, rendering visitor. And there is no coupling between the shape and the shape visitors here. Um, again, shape knows only about one abstract interface and how to interact with it, meaning all it knows is that I'm going to accept this interface and immediately pass myself back to it. Now, um, a word about multiple dispatch. So what, what is a multiple dispatch? It is a way to select the method um, and the parameters to that method uh, based on the dynamic types uh, of both the, the object upon which you're calling uh, and the dynamic type of the parameter. And in this code example here, uh, you see that I'm trying to call a method visit of the uh, shape visitor um, with with C or S, but C or S are um, th their static type. Uh, you know, at compile time was was shape pointer, right? So they cannot overload, uh, and they cannot match on the on the visit for circle or visit for square here. Uh, so you will see that the, the SV, for example, the the serializing visitor, you know, that will resolve. Um, the, the, the visit virtual function call will, will resolve itself to the uh, serializing shape visitor, but neither the C nor the S uh, will resolve to their corresponding dynamic types. Um, however, inside the instances of C and S, the type is known. Um, therefore, in order to, to achieve this multiple dispatch idea, uh, you need to do a double virtual function call. Uh, let me let me explain this a little further. So here, if you look again at the accept method, um, accept method for circle passes this, and it, and we know exactly what this points to in inside the circles accept. It, this type is circle. Uh, same for the square. Inside the square, um, the type of this pointer is is the square. Uh, but outside. In, in this this usage example, right, this this wouldn't work at all. Um, that's why uh, the last two lines uh, here are are highlighted in red by my IDE because it says it simply cannot um, cannot resolve uh, cannot resolve the type. 
and what, what, what method to pick. So that's why, again, this, this multiple dispatch is achieved by, by performing two virtual function calls. Uh, so again, the first virtual function call is this accept, which resolves first to the dynamic type of the object upon which you're calling. And then inside this accept, the second virtual function call is the visit, which then resolves the dynamic type of the visitor and appropriately matches on the concrete type. So that's that's basically the idea of, uh, of multiple dispatch. Uh, and that's, as far as I understand, the only way to do it in, in C++ because in C++, uh, it's a strongly typed language, so every type needs to be resolved and known at compile time in order to, to match things like function signatures and so on. Um, and because of that limitation, if you would, uh, multiple dispatch must be implemented through, uh, through two function calls. And it's, it's effectively how the visitor pattern um, achieves, achieves this. And that's it.